What's up, you friggin' geniuses? In this video, I'm gonna teach you what parentheses, brackets, and braces are, and how we use them, what they look like, and I'll show you an example with each one too. Okay, so let's get started. First of all, parentheses. Let's write that down. What are parentheses? So maybe you've seen these symbols before. They're these rounded symbols. And all these are used for are to group parts of a math equation together. The parentheses, brackets, and braces. They're all used to group parts of a math equation together. Okay, so parentheses, these are the most common. All right, you will see these on most of your problems. They're the most widely used. But, like I said, there's two other ones that we have called brackets. And these look more squared. They look like that. They're not as common as parentheses. Not nearly as common. Parentheses are used most of the time. But sometimes you will see brackets. And then the last one that you might see on a rare occasion are called braces. And they're more fancy looking like that. Okay, so let's do an example so you can see what it looks like. Now, if I wrote 5 plus 3 times 2. Okay, where the parentheses are matters. It is super, super important. You always solve whatever is inside the parentheses first. Okay, so for example, if I put the parentheses right here, whatever's inside these parentheses, that is what you solve first. So what is five plus three? Well, that's equal to eight. Okay, now we can deal with whatever is outside of the parentheses. All right, so we have this times two right here. So we'll do eight times two. And what's eight times two? 16. Okay, so now I'm gonna move the parentheses. So this is the same problem, five plus three times two, but I'm gonna move the parentheses over here to the three times two. Okay, again, whatever is inside the parentheses, that is where you start. That is what you solve first. So what is three times two? That's six, okay? Now we can deal with whatever's outside. So we have this five plus right here, so we'll write five plus. So five plus six is equal to 11. As you can see, I got two completely different answers. And that's why it's so important to make sure you start with whatever is inside the parentheses, because if you don't, you will get the wrong answer. Okay, let's do another example. What if I wrote, two and in parentheses we will put how about two plus one so how would i solve this well again you do whatever is inside the parentheses first so what is inside the parentheses here well we have two plus one what is that equal to three okay and now we have this number outside of the parentheses just sitting there there's no symbol here right there's no multiplication sign there's no division sign, there's no addition, and there's no subtraction, right? It's literally just a number next to the parentheses. So whenever you see that, that means multiply, okay? So in this case, we would have two multiplied with what we got inside the parentheses, which was three. So two times three is equal to six. Okay, so that's how you deal with parentheses. Now let's move on to brackets. All right, now what if I gave you 15 minus two plus nine minus eight? All right, and what if I put the parentheses here and I'll put the brackets, I'll put the brackets right here. Okay, now I have parentheses and brackets. So this can be kind of confusing, right? Because you're like, do I do the brackets first or do I do the parentheses first? Well, you always start with whatever is the most inside or whatever is the smallest part. Okay, what do I mean by that? All right, so what's bigger? These brackets from here to here or these parentheses just from here to here? Well, the parentheses, right? This is the small little part. That's the most inside part of the equation. So that's where we're going to start. Okay, so what is nine minus eight? Well, that just reduces down to one, okay? And now let's bring the rest of the equation down. We have this two plus right there, right? And then don't forget, we have the brackets. 
on the outside. And then lastly, we have this 15 minus on the outside. Okay, so I solved the parentheses, so I can drop them. Now I just have what's left inside the brackets. So what's inside the brackets? I have two plus one. Okay, well, what is two plus one? Well, that's three. Okay, and then we have this 15 minus out here. So this big thing up here, we reduced it down to simply three. Okay, so now we can solve it. 15 minus three is equal to 12. Now, like I said, parentheses are the most commonly used grouping symbols. So occasionally you might see this problem. I'm gonna rewrite the same problem, this original problem. 15 minus two plus nine minus eight, okay? Occasionally, instead of brackets, they might just use parentheses again. So we'll put parentheses around this nine minus eight, and instead of these brackets, they might just use parentheses again. Okay, but looking at all these parentheses, it gets kind of confusing, because you don't know, it's, it's a little difficult to see what's grouped with what. That's the whole reason we use a slightly different symbol. So instead of parentheses, that's why we use brackets. However, if you do see a problem like this, where you have a set of parentheses like this, but then you have another set of parentheses like this, which one do you start with? Well, again, you start with the innermost part or the smallest part. So what's smaller? These big parentheses from here to here or this small parentheses from here to here? Well, it's this small one still, right? So we would still follow the same process. So we'd get nine minus eight, right? Which was one. And then we'd get this two plus. And then instead of drawing brackets, we would just draw these parentheses again, right? That one and that one. And then we'd still have this 15 minus out here. So we would still solve it the same way. So with that in mind, let's move on to the last example with the braces. Okay, last example. What if we have 18 minus 13 minus 2 plus 10 minus 9? Okay, now let's group this bad boy. So let's put parentheses here and the brackets, let's put them here and the braces. We'll put them here. Okay, so again, there's all these grouping symbols, right? But you're always gonna start with the smallest one, with the innermost one. So again, what's the smallest one? Is it these big braces? Is it this middle-sized bracket? Or is it these short little parentheses? Well, it's the parentheses, right? So that is where we're gonna start, with the smallest one or the innermost one, however you wanna think of it. So let's solve what's inside these parentheses. 10 minus nine, what is that? One, okay, finish that. Now let's move to the next layer, the brackets. We have two plus, right? And then let's draw in our brackets. And we also, let's not forget the rest of this. Let's not forget our braces right here. So again, at this point, I'm going to ask myself, what is the smallest grouping symbol or what is the innermost grouping symbol now? Well, it's the brackets, right? So we have two plus one, which reduces down to three. Okay, so we reduced that. Now we can write in the rest of our expression. So we have 13 minus Okay, and we still have our braces on here, right? These right here, and then we still have this 18 way out here by itself. So again, we have to take care of all the grouping symbols first. So I need to do this 13 minus three part now. So what is 13 minus three? Well, that's just 10. Okay, and write the rest of your expression, bring it down. Now we reduced, we reduced this whole thing, this whole thing right here, just down to 10. Now we can solve just normally. So what's 18 minus 10? That's just eight. Okay, so remember, always solve what's inside your grouping symbol first. And if you have multiple grouping symbols, like we have three different grouping symbols here, always start with the smallest one. Okay, because what if I switch these around a little bit? 
Now, what if we put the brackets in here and I put the parentheses out here? Now, which one do I start with? Well, again, you always start with the one that is the smallest, the one that's the most inside, which in this case would be the brackets. Okay, it doesn't matter what the symbol looks like. You always start with the innermost one or the smallest one. So I hope that was helpful because it's a very, very important math concept to understand. If you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up. And if you still got questions, leave them in the comment section below. I got a whole pre-algebra playlist if you need help with any other pre-algebra topic. So definitely check it out and I'll see you there.